Alright guys, so today we're going to be looking at a project I'm calling Scavenger. It's not a final name, but you'll see why it's named that later. There's a lot to get into, so we're just going to get started. Oh, what the fuck? So over the past six months, I've tried to commit to one project as lately since I'm a beginner. I've been working on smaller scale things that aren't really games, more like uh, features, I guess, like a procedural level generator or like a flying AI, stuff like that. Now, I'd like to show you some footage of this, but looking back on the code now, I have no idea what the f I'm looking at. And now, yes, I know what you might be thinking. Uh, he's actually visual scripting. That's not real coding. Um, <laughs> what is wrong with me? Some of you may already know this, but game development isn't something just like as simple as dragging in a light, for example, or, or, oh wait, yeah, it is. What the fuck? So yeah, if you haven't noticed, I've been using Unreal Engine, which makes the process of making games obviously way easier than starting from scratch. And trust me, you, you, you probably don't really want to do that, especially if you're a beginner. <laughs> Whoa. And it crashed. So the tools that Unreal provides is actually really nice and saves you a lot of time, but by no means does that really make the process that much simpler. I mean, yes, you don't really have to go through the painstaking coding of making something actually render on the screen. Unreal actually does that for you, but there's literally a YouTube video that's like an hour and a half long talking about just lighting features. So yes, it is a little simple to just drag a light in, but that's just scratching the surface of all the things you can do with that light. And obviously, to clarify, yes, I'm still going to be learning C++ later on, as you could obviously do more with it, and it is proven that blueprints are a little bit less efficient than C++, but for now, it should be alright. There's bigger fish to fry. I don't think this bubble can get much bigger. Nonsense! <laughs> now, I know there's probably a bigger burning question on all your minds right now. What is this f***ing game we talking about here? Well, I'm glad you hypothetically asked, and if you didn't ask, I'm asking it for you, okay? You don't really have a choice. So I'm like a huge fan of co-op games. Co-op shooters, to be more precise. And like, a really big fan. Now, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be shooters, as I like all co-op games, but there's just something about causing a chaotic genocide with various degrees of weaponry. I mean, some of my greatest times in games comes from those tense, chaotic moments in Killing Floor where you're with your boys and you're getting surrounded by a bunch of psychotic clones with chainsaws strapped to their arms trying to kill you. Now, I'm not saying this game is going to be like the next Left 4 Dead or anything, and we all know how that turned out. <laughs> Both because, well, I'm kind of a noob, obviously, but also I want to try and work on some other gameplay aspects that I want to see if I could practice. As a very stark contrast, I also enjoy games like No Man's Sky, and also the times in like Fallout when you're just like wandering around taking the atmosphere in. And I think it would play out as like a wonderful dichotomy when all mixed together. And that's where the name Scavenger actually comes in. See, I, I told you you'd figure it out. When I went to go choose an asset pack, I wanted there to be some type of gameplay element I can implement with what's there and with this zombie apocalypse pack that you probably recognize the author of these assets make tons more assets and are used in a lot of other games but when i found this you know they have this modular weapon system going on here and I thought it'd be cool to maybe implement a system where you can go out into the world and find materials to make upgrades and attachments for your weapons. And I don't know, maybe even some custom weapons. I mean, I don't know how far I'm going to be able to go with it, but I want it to be pretty cool because, well, you're going to be shooting a lot of things in this game. So being able to customize what you're shooting would be kind of cool. Like I said, it could totally snowball into something way over complicated, but I definitely want to do something with it. So I know that might sound all kind of vague, but a lot of things are subject to change, obviously. And in game development, you kind of need to feel things out and see how they are as they go and figure out what stuff is good and what stuff isn't, what mixes together well. It's still very much in the early stages, obviously, but I mean, it's the first devlog. What were you really expecting here? With all that being said, though, there's a lot to go through still, so strap in because it is rewind time. So the guns in this version are definitely just proof of concept prototypes, both to get a hand in animating and just programming weapons in general. You can actually see here that I originally had a Glock in the game, contrary to what I had later, as eventually I had to scrap it because of incompatibilities with how I was doing weapons later on. As far as the weapons actually go for this build, it was very simple. I wanted to try to do one type of every gun, besides a sniper because I didn't really have time to do that. So there was a pistol, an SMG, a shotgun, an assault rifle, and a rocket launcher. 
Every gun had its own set of unique animations, which took up the bulk of the time creating the weapons. They had their own recoil, bullet spread, and reload times with accompanying animations. Again, none of this was really final, as I just wanted to get a hand in and how I can get it working in the simplest way possible. The animations took a really long time, as it was basically its own separate thing to learn from Unreal. I wouldn't say it was as incredibly difficult compared to, say, like learning actual modeling, but there was a lot of weird intricacies to figure out in Blender in particular, like detaching and reattaching a mag, which in Blender, in my opinion, was way more complex than it needs to be. Like I said though, I want to get a hand in animations as, in my opinion, I feel like it gives way more freedom to what you can actually do with the assets you create, or in my case, purchase from the store because I can't even draw sick people correctly. As for the weapon logic itself, the bullets are your typical line traces from the weapon barrel to the center of the crosshair, and the bullet spread was pretty much just calculated as sideways angle offsets from where the bullet was firing. Interestingly though, in games like Call of Duty this works very differently, as it seems to be calculated as a random point on a radius from the center of the crosshair here, which naturally makes results actually more skewed towards the center. There's a YouTuber by the name of Sovereign Gaming that actually has a very interesting video on this topic, and it goes really in depth if you want to hear more. It's definitely something I'm interested in doing, but for now though, getting all this to work was actually a lot of work on its own. I had to find ways to gradually increase bullet spread and recoil, which for the recoil was just gradually adding pitch to the player's input. However, it was extremely difficult to get this frame rate independent. For some reason, the way adding input is calculated in Unreal adding a value multiplied by delta time doesn't totally fix this issue and was a pain in the ass to understand. I will spare you most of the details because it took ages of troubleshooting to get it right and I still don't really think I got it perfect in the end, but it was close enough. And of course there's other things like being able to drop weapons, which I totally got on my first try, <laughs> no big deal, and outlines for the weapon pickups, stuff like that. I also wanted to add in effects for like the muzzle flash, bullet tracers, and decals when a bullet impacts with a surface. So this is my first time touching the effect system in Unreal, which for those who don't know is called Niagara. And there seems to be a ton you could do with this. I mean, you could probably spend months figuring out what all this shit does. And I know you can make some pretty complex effects with it. So the muzzle flash at first I tried to make from scratch, which with my programming brain didn't really go well. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm so artistically challenged, I can't even draw like a basic shape. But then I found out that the pack that I was using came with the muzzle flash, which was a big relief. For some reason, emitters have this really bizarre behavior when attaching to objects, but I eventually got it figured out. Oh, that looks so cool, okay. The tracer and bullet impacts, minus the actual decals, I actually made myself. Again, they are very simple, but I thought it looked pretty good in the end for getting my feet wet with it. Now, there's a lot more oddities with actually implementing the weapons, but if I went over all that in this video, it'd be hours long, and you'd probably get bored as I was banging my head against the table with all this, so it's probably a good time to move on to the next tasks to tackle. So this wouldn't be much of a horde shooter without some Zeds, right? Please don't sue me, Tripwire. I'm not actually calling them Zeds. It's just a meme, all right? And yes, once again, Cinti came to the rescue with this pack of special zombies that should be easy to whip up some unique enemies with. So the goal for this build, again, was very simple. I just wanted to get the normal base zombie down, of course, and try one special zombie that was able to shoot projectiles and res other zombies that you don't get headshots on. Unfortunately, I lost a lot of the footage of the AI work I was doing, but to be honest, it wasn't really that interesting anyway. The basis of the AI for the normal zombie zombies were just some control points around the player that they would pick based off of what other zombies were picking and then just hit. The special zombie I was codenaming the wretch at the time was a little bit more complicated. Basically, if there was any non-headless zombies in range, they would run over and try and res them. And if there were no resable zombies in range, they would just spit at you like the little shits they are. For some reason though, this got really buggy eventually as you probably obviously saw in the intro. And it crashed. Oh, and I crashed. No, what the, what the fuck? Oh my god, it's crashing, why? So this definitely needs to be redone, but it was an interesting experiment nonetheless. The coolest part though about making the zombies was the effects and the physics. So I was able to take some of the pre-made effects from the pack and make it into some cool effects like a blood fountain when you shoot a zombie's head off, which looked pretty cool. And I made a little like slimy ball projectile thing for the wretch, which I actually thought didn't look too bad for just a clump of green cubes, basically. Now the physics though was probably the coolest part. As you could probably imagine, making a ton of impact animations would be a pain in the cock. So why not just make it all procedural with the actual simulated physics, eh? Seriously though, while this was a lot of work and the documentation being so obscure, I had 
had to watch a scout trooper program basic physics on himself. It actually turned out pretty cool in the end, and I really look forward to refining this more in the future and making it even more satisfying. One of the most important things in horde shooters is making sure shooting things have satisfying feedback, and oh boy does this look already satisfying. So with all that stuff out of the way, all that was left to do was basically one of the most important things to put in a game like this. When it comes to games, as I already mentioned, having a multiplayer component is something that's really important to me. So getting this down was a huge priority for me, especially going forward, even if it proves to be a little bit more difficult than making single player games. I think that should fix it. Oh, what the f because the payoff is way worth it. So you might be wondering, how do you achieve this wizardry of being able to play with someone across the world from the comfort of your own little dungeon, eh? Well, I'm here to somewhat answer that question in hopefully simple enough terms that a monkey can understand. So basically, there's one player hosting the game for everyone else that typically we call the server. This person controls everything about the game. What map is currently loaded in, the state of the entities on that map, they're basically God. All this information is then sent back to the clients, which are people who join the host's game. Basically, the clients are a bunch of little bitches that need daddy to tell them what's going on. The clients do talk to the server to tell them things like their name and if they want to shoot a gun, for example. But the server always takes that information in and checks if it's okay and if the little bastard isn't cheating or something. Then sends that information back to not only the asking client, but all the other clients so they're all in the loop with what's happening as well. The biggest misconception about this is that people usually think that clients can also talk to each other, but that is never the case. Remember, daddy needs to know and supervise everything first before he approves little Timmy's request to go watch an inappropriate movie or whatever the hell he wants to ruin his innocence with. All jokes aside though, in a nutshell, it's a big game of syncing the game world to all the other clients in the most efficient way possible, because technically we can't send all that information or everyone's router will explode. So everything up until this point was all single player oriented with no server present, so we kind of need to change that. So at first I actually just jumped in by adding another client to see what Unreal already has set up, since the basic player movement component is already networked out of the box, which is really helpful. Some features actually did seem to be working, uh, sort of, but it was all kind of a facade and I definitely had to basically rewrite almost everything. Now there was a lot of work to do here and there still is, so I'll just go over some of the highlights for now. First order of business was getting all the weapons to sync up correctly. Since this was my first networked feature, it kind of took a while. It ended up being a weird back and forth where I'd make progress Ooh. Okay, that worked. And then immediately regress afterwards somehow. Wow. Okay, so that just broke it even more. And then in the end, after hours and hours, I ultimately found out that I was handling a single variable wrong, which was both a big relief, but also a big frustration as well. Is that why this entire time? Oh no. So the next obvious thing on the list at this point was the AI, which also had its own slew of problems. Obviously a lot of things weren't syncing up at first, but it actually wasn't as hard as the weapons, probably because I was getting more comfortable with replication at this point. But one big point of contention was the physics. As you know at this point, there is an enemy in the game that can res other dead bodies, and well, in Unreal, technically the physics don't replicate one to one. And I mean, it makes sense because again, router go boom. So after some weirdness, what the f I set up a temporary system that teleports the body if the corpse location on the client is way far off where it is on the host. It's definitely a scuffed system right now and can kind of result in a bunch of teleporting bodies in the worst case scenario, but the way it's configured right now seems to be clean enough. Now, there's definitely a lot of other bugs and weirdness implementing multiplayer, but again, just like with the weapons, it would take way too long to go over all that right now, and I really want to show how the playtest went. So after all this was said and done, I threw together a little main menu to make connecting to games easier and some graphics settings. Packaged it all up with a little bow in the package manager and then sent it off to the boys. Uh, John! Wow. Wow. <laughs> Does anyone uh, want to do a network <clears throat> test? A network test? Mm hmm What is that? For what? What do you mean by that? For my game. Oh, shit. Where's Oh! So at first I just tried port forwarding the default Unreal port, which didn't really seem to work, but I just decided to try it anyway. Oh, please work. <laughs> Not work. Damn it. So of course that didn't work. So we tried using zero tier, which if you don't know what zero tier is, it's basically Hamachi, but not stupid. And of course that still didn't work. Uh, oh, 
Oh, f it should like no. it should join right away. I don't know what's wrong with it. So I went scouring through the internet trying to find solutions until I found out that what seemed to be the problem was Unreal's built-in lobby system or something like that. And obviously I'm pretty sure this is used for like Steam multiplayer and stuff later, but since we're not using that right now, I just disabled it and it ended up working. Jim, I'll play a CG. Yo, oh, yeah. it's working. We're here you are. So yeah, overall the play tests actually went pretty well. It was kind of cool to see someone else running around other than myself in the game. And actually, I mean, I knew about the rocket jumping, but it was cool to see people figure out that you could rocket jump in the game and just being obsessed with that rocket jumping around. I mean, it was pretty fun. The only bug that I ran into is that if you died while looking in the menu screen, it would bug out and you wouldn't be able to click off of it, which kind of was annoying. There's also a bug where if someone shot a gun really far away, it would still sound like you're right next to them. Oh, wait, whenever you wait, shoot, shoot the AK again. Okay, hold on. I got reload. Oh yeah, the, okay. Seems like I didn't really put the right attenuation on the gun sound, so that needs to be fixed, obviously. But other than that, it was it was pretty nice. So overall, I'd mark it as a success. So something that might seem very obvious at this point is that it might seem like I glossed over a lot of things in this video. And well, you'd be right. There was a physics setup to make it so that enemies weren't just flopping around all over the place. There was a custom material that I had to use so guns won't clip through walls. And I didn't really talk about the UI among other things. It's not that I didn't want to talk about these things or anything. And I'll definitely be talking more about this type of stuff in future devlogs. But as you could tell, this video is already pretty long as it is. And to be honest, most of the stuff is probably gonna be redone. Not long after this build was finished, Unreal 5 has come out. And while yes, I could technically just take this project and push it over to Unreal 5 pretty seamlessly, I wanted to try and see if I can build it from the ground up again on a more solid foundation now, especially since I have more context about things like multiplayer and proper game structure in general. I will definitely still be copying and pasting stuff from the Unreal project, and the transfer will probably look mostly the same, but under the hood, it should hopefully be more organized and suited for more expansion. And it really shouldn't take that long this time around either, as this time I'll be able to copy a lot of stuff over, and I'll just know what I'm doing more in general. And yes, I am shooting to try and add at least some new content for the next devlog, so stay tuned for that. Speaking of which, I do have a Twitch channel if you want to go check that out. It's not like I have a schedule or anything right now, but go chuck it a follow. I'll be watching. And if you're interested, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see my development antics live. Also, I know you've been eyeing that subscribe button as well. I know you want to do some dirty things to it. I mean, hey man, I won't judge. Seriously though, this definitely has been a lot of fun. And if you're somebody thinking of giving game development a try or you're just a gamer, gamer in general, I would not hesitate giving it a shot. It's definitely not going to be the most straightforward thing in the world, but with a little elbow grease and perseverance, you'll be surprised with how much you can accomplish, even if you're just starting out. Anyways, that's enough for me now. I'll hopefully see you guys again soon.